Hi everybody, welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you are new, I'm Corey, and I'm really excited that you're here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope that you'll consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And to my subscribers, thank you so much for your ongoing support. I love reading all of your comments and interacting with you all. It really warms my heart. So thank you so, so much. If you enjoy today's video, I hope that you'll give me a big thumbs up because it really does support my channel. So today we are going to be announcing the winner from the Dollar Tree giveaway. So excited about that. You want to make sure you stay tuned to see who the winner is. Also going to be having some shout outs and I have this burning question that I'm going to be asking you all. I need your input on something that I'm thinking about doing or not doing, and I really need your help there. So I hope that you'll watch through to the end. And again, comment, give me a big thumbs up if you like what you see, and reminder to subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the crafts. Okay, so here we go with DIY number one. And this actually isn't a craft, but this is a desk rehab. So this little guy is a little bit banged up, as you can see. I found this on Facebook Marketplace. Someone was giving it away for free. And if it had been just for me, I would have given it a rough sanding and just painted it. But it's for Rich and he wanted it refinished with the natural wood um, color. Not color, but natural wood. He didn't want it painted. So I went ahead and got to sanding. First of all, obviously I took all the drawers out. <clears throat> and I took the knobs off the drawers, got everything ready, and then I think I was probably bringing a knife to a gunfight. You can see the little detail sander that I have there that I'm going to use, and that's really the only tool, sanding tool, power tool that I own. If this were going to be the type of thing I would do on a regular basis, which at least right now is not, I might invest in an orbital sander or other tools. I'm not even exactly sure what is best to use for uh, furniture sanding, but this is what I had. So this is what I chose to use. And yes, that is a leaf blower <laughs> that I was using to blow off the sawdust so I could see what I was doing. Um, and here it is all sanded and I am going over it with some polyurethane. It needed three coats. You can see it's still drying, obviously, on the top of there, but look at that wood, you guys. It was absolutely gorgeous, and I am so happy that I did not paint this because it's just beautiful. And Rich did send me some pictures to share with you after it was all set up at his place. So here it is in place, all done and dry absolutely gorgeous. I was really happy with how this turned out. Let me know what you think. And here we go for DIY number two and the first craft project. So for this we're going to use a vase from Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge, doesn't matter what kind of Mod Podge, the creepy cloth from Dollar Tree, a ping pong ball from Dollar Tree, and then a sharpie black paint marker. You could also just use a regular sharpie marker if you wanted to so trying to figure out how i want to work with this creepy cloth at first and at first i just had completely opened it all up and then i'd started with one corner and i was kind of wrapping it around and trying to see how this was going to work how opaque it was going to be how it would just sit on the glass etc so it wasn't really liking the way that it was laying like this. So I ended up taking it off. I folded it in half lengthwise and I gave it another shot. So here it is with it folded in half lengthwise. And then I did kind of bunch it again. And then I just went round and round the vase. And I was much happier with the way that it was sitting this way rather than completely opened up and then just trying to bunch it up around. So 
So once I was happy with the way that it was starting to look, I went ahead and took it off again and I gave the entire vase a coat of Mod Podge. At first I thought, well, maybe I could just squoosh down the, <clears throat> excuse me, squoosh down the creepy cloth and then slide it back up again. And I decided that was just gonna make a mess of the creepy cloth. So took it off, Mod Podge the whole thing. And while it was still wet, I'm just bringing my creepy cloth around and around and around again. Have you figured out what we're making yet? <laughs> so now I am just trying to, while it's still wet, um, find some spots for the eyeballs. And I'm taking one ping pong ball and my Dollar Tree craft knife, and I'm just going to slice the ping pong ball in half. And I'm using the seam that's already there on the ball and trying very hard to be very careful not to cut myself. You wanna work away from your fingers as much as possible. I'm using my Sharpie paint marker to draw on some, what was this, irises? I guess these are irises. They're not the pupils. I left the pupils white, so. Um, and then just positioning my eyeballs in between the creepy cloth and then I'll come in with some hot glue just to secure everything and make sure that the cloth is around where I want it. And there you go. And I'm gonna come in later with some fairy lights and you'll get to see how that turns out. So here, I need your thoughts on this, everybody. I found the cutest little piggies at the Dollar Tree. Aren't they adorable? Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. They're little piggy angels. Do you see their angel wings? I'll show you the backs of them in a second. But here's my dilemma. Do I just use them to decorate one of my tear trays or something like this? Or do I paint them? I cannot decide what to do. I absolutely love them. What do I do? <laughs> Please leave a comment and tell me if you think I should paint them or leave them be. So here we go with DIY number three. So for this, I'm gonna be using some Christmas ornaments. These are the kind you can decorate yourself. Sharpie paint marker, three little mini pots that came from the Dollar Tree, three to a pack some white cloth that I had left over from another project, and some skewers. I believe these were also from the Dollar Tree. I've got my linen white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum, and I'm gonna give my little pots um, just one really good coat. These really took the paint well, and I only needed one coat to get really good coverage on this. So while those are set aside drying, I'm just taking something round, in this instance, my pizza screen, and I am going to be cutting out a round piece of fabric. Um, this is not something that you should do on a surface that you care about. I'm just doing this on my craft table. I should have gotten out my mat, my cutting mat, but I didn't bother because I was being lazy. <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, I'm just using my craft knife to kind of make a rough circle. It did not need to be perfect. I wasn't looking for perfection here, um, but I got it started and then I came in and used my scissors on the rest. I was surprised at how well that craft knife actually cut because I wasn't pressing real hard. Just wanted to uh, try and get myself started there. So now taking out three of my ornaments, and these are glass from Hobby Lobby, but Dollar Tree has theirs out now, so you can find them in plastic. So if this is something you decide you'd like to do with a little kid, or if you have a child or a grandchild, and this is something you wanna do with them, I would recommend maybe getting the plastic version of this. Showing you my floral foam. I picked this up, I'm trying to remember if it was Joanne or if it was Michael's but there were six to the pack and it was like $5 for six of them. So Dollar Tree, you get one for a dollar. So this, it was like getting one for free. So I, I loved that deal. I'm just going to cut some of my foam. I'm using an old kitchen knife that is now part of my <laughs> um, craft tool collection. So just cutting that down so that it's going to fit in my little pot. And so I'm doing that for each of the pots. And once I have those all cut down the way I want them, I'm going to go ahead and secure them with some hot glue in the bottom of each of my vase, not vases, my pots. There you go, my little flower pots. 
So once that is all secure, I'm actually going to flip those over and I'm going to place my skewers through the foam. So these are gonna be the bases for our little ghosts. And you could actually put fairy lights inside of the ornaments or wrap fairy lights around the skewers and they would actually glow. So that's something really cute that you could do for Halloween as well. So just making my little ghosts and then I'm going to be coming in with my black paint marker and I'm going to make little faces for them. There's my Sharpie paint marker. Again, you could use a regular Sharpie. It doesn't have to be a paint marker. Now I did find that this went right through the fabric onto my ornament. If that is something you want to avoid, you might want to just put something underneath the area while you are doing this. I did want to do it while it was on there so I had the face positioned the way that I wanted it. And then I just went in um, afterwards and I took some rubbing alcohol and I was able to um, wipe away the paint that I had gotten on the ornament itself. My thought was, you know, I might be able to use the ornaments later on for something else. I didn't glue these down or anything of that nature. You certainly can. I just didn't, uh, didn't bother to do that. So once I had all of my little faces done, I tried to vary them a little bit so they complement each other but weren't exactly the same. I decided I wanted to make one of them a little bit shorter. So I just clipped my skewer down, I think about two or three inches, and then set my little guy right back on top. I had made one of my circles of fabric a little bit smaller than the other two, so this worked out really well for me. And so I've got a little trio of ghosts for Halloween. Very cute. So D, oh, sorry, no, shout out timeout. Woohoo! So we've got some ladies who shared. Awesome job, Kate. Shout out to you for these projects that you shared. Kate is looking to start her own little Etsy shop, and I think she's got a great start. Beautiful work to Raquel. She created these for her friend who was moving into a new home, and her friend thought that they were store bought. So great job Raquel and a pretty project from Mary Ellen she took a Dollar Tree trash can used some acrylic paint and a stencil and some cord and made it super cute so thank you ladies for sharing your projects with us here we go for DIY number four so for this DIY we are going to be using another little Dollar Tree vase and I'm using some sunflower napkins as well as some Mod Podge. Now, if you saw my video from a few weeks ago, I had Mod Podged a pumpkin. I had painted the pumpkin white and did green uh, leaf uh, napkins that I Mod Podged on here. So we're using the same technique. So you can see me coming in. This is just water that I'm using on my little paintbrush to come in and go around the area that I want to cut out. It just gives it a little bit um, more leeway as far as being able to rip the napkin. When you rip the napkin, you have a softer edge and it's not as apparent when you go ahead and Mod Podge the project uh, together, if you will. So coming in, I Mod Podge to the glass and now I'm applying my napkin and going to Mod Podge over the top of that. Now because of the curvature here, I did go in and I clipped the napkin. You're going to see me doing that in just a second. I decided where I wanted the overlap to be and how I wanted it to overlap and then I cut the napkin accordingly. And then I just pressed down the part that I wanted underneath and then over top of that, I pressed down the other piece of the napkin. So I'm hoping that that makes sense. So I just did that with each of the pieces until I had the entire surface covered. This one, I'm going to clip it on either side of that flower and I'm going to tuck the pieces underneath so that that flower is going to be on top. 
And with these particular napkins, they just seemed to blend really well. I don't know if it was just the way that the colors melded together or the pattern itself that was printed on the napkin, but I was really happy with the way that it turned out. I'm sorry, you guys, you can probably hear Sammy's little uh, collar rattling <laughs> because he is here keeping me company as per usual and uh, he's jumping around a little bit. So, but here I go with this one more piece. I did end up cutting out a few others or ripping out a few others and just giving you a close up there so all of that will dry clear obviously right now there's a lot of white in there from the mod podge so once i had everything on i did go in and give it a really good extra coat of mod podge just to seal everything in and help give it a good surface now if you wanted to be extra of course i've got my heat gun because i have to dry it so you can see if you want to be extra you could sand this all down a little bit and then go in again with another coat so here we go with diy number five for this i'm going to be using some burlap left over from a project a few weeks ago some more of my white fabric now I'm showing you the needles that I planned on using, and some of these are actually needles for making dolls, which you could totally use this. I ended up just using hot glue instead, I didn't bother. Um, and then I'm also using a Dollar Tree placemat and some fiber fill. So I'm starting out by folding my fabric in half, and I am going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to be cutting out somewhat of an egg shape or an oval shape. I'm thinking about, you know, the shape of a face, if you will, just like the outer edges of a head. So I'm going to cut through both sides. I folded it in half once I did the one side so that I would have a symmetrical shape, if you will. So once I had that cut out, I'm gonna fold down the one side. I'm gonna leave that bottom side unglued, which is why I folded it the way that I did, and gluing the edge around the rest of it. So I left that bottom piece open. I'm gonna flip it right side out. <clears throat> now, if you have a sewing machine, you prefer to sew this, feel free, you certainly can. I just decided I was gonna use hot glue. I did that um, recently, making some pillows for my daughter's dorm room, and it worked out really well, so I figured why not? So now I'm gonna come in with some uh, burlap, and I'm just going to go over my little head that I'm making with the burlap. So I've cut this down to size, I'm going to wrap it around to the back and then just glue that down in the back. And I'm not worried about it not completely coming together because I'm going to be covering that up later with something else. So then I'm going to tie off the, what actually is going to be the top, and then also tie off the bottom just trying to make sure that my burlap is nice and snug around the entire surface. So for the bottom part, I'm using some jute cord that is wired. This is again left over from another project I did a while back. I'm just gonna cut that off. And now I've got my buttons that are from the Dollar Tree and I am just looking for some that I think might serve well as eyes. So I have my eyeballs all glued on and now I'm pulling out all of the little red buttons so that I can make a mouth. So going ahead and gluing my mouth on and again you could sew these if you wanted to. I just chose to do the hot glue. It's coming together nicely though. So now I'm going to be using some sticky felt. So it's felt that actually has an adhesive on the back of it and I'm cutting out a triangle for the nose, peeling that off and placing that on. And then I was thinking that it might be nice to have little white buttons on the eyes just to give it a little bit more dimension or interest or I don't know, make them look, I don't know, more like the eyes are 
more real. I, I have no idea what I was thinking, but glued those on, gave a little bit of extra glue to the nose and our faces come in together. So now I am going to take the Dollar Tree placemat and I'm going to disassemble it almost completely, not entirely, but almost completely. And I'm going to build him a hat. And if I had black felt, that wasn't just the sticky felt. If I had regular black felt, I probably would have tried to make the hat out of that. It might have looked a little bit more scarecrow-like, but this is what I had, and this is what I decided I was gonna try. So I was just trying to decide how wide I wanted the hat to be. So that was what I was doing there. And ultimately I left all but four, well, I left it with four rounds that were still together. Now I'm coming back in with my hot glue and I'm going to start making the hat part that goes on the head, if that makes sense. So I'm bringing in some hot glue and standing it upright to form the hat. I don't know what the part, this part of the hat is called. I know what the brim is called. I don't know what this part of the hat is called. If you know, leave me a comment. Um, so just building that up until I get it to the height of the hat that I want. And then I'm going to turn it slightly to start making the brim. So I left this all one length of whatever this is. I don't even know what this is made out of, but I never cut it. I just left it all in one piece and I just reassembled it in a different manner. I don't know, as I was doing this, it wasn't coming out perfectly round. It kind of reminded me more of like a little cowboy hat. So I was thinking it might be good, but uh, then I had shared it with my friend Rebecca because I felt like something was not quite right with it. And she suggested maybe it needed to be a little bit more rustic. So I did ultimately end up going back in with some uh, Java chalk paint from home decor and kind of dirtied it up a little bit, if you will. Um, and added a little birdie to it. Of course, I forgot to turn my camera back on for that, but at any rate, right now, I had decided I wanted him to be able to stand up on his own. So I'm taking these glass pebbles. I'm not sure what they are, but they're from the Dollar Tree and putting them in a tin can and I'm gonna undo his neck and I'm just gonna slide him right down onto the can. And then, there you go. And then I'm gonna refasten his little necktie piece. So now he actually has a neck and he can stand up on his own. He's looking kind of dapper, I think. So I don't know. I figured, you know, farmers, when they make their scarecrows, they also use what they have. So who says he can't have a fancy little red hat? <laughs> And I decided, why not? Let's put some sunflowers on there too, because, you know, we've got to fancy up our little scarecrow. Make him pretty. So coming in, I had cut the stem off completely from the sunflowers and just gluing these on with some hot glue. And then I also trimmed off a couple of leaves from my stem that the sunflowers were on, and I'm going to glue those in there as well. come in with some raffia this is also from the Dollar Tree and I apologize because of this giant hat you can't really see what I'm doing and it didn't occur to me at the time but I'm really just tucking in the raffia underneath the brim of the hat um, around his face there you go you can see it there because I mean he is supposed to be a straw man right so just making him look like he's made of straw and then in that back area where I had the opening still that wasn't covered with the burlap I'm tucking in more raffia so here we go with DIY number six so for this one we are going to use a wreath form I got at the end of last Christmas season for like a dollar fifty or something it was amazing and then I've got some leftover deco mesh and some new deco mesh. And then those fun little things from the Dollar Tree that I showed you that are actually the identical color. I've got a bunch of picks from the Dollar Tree. I've got some witches hats. I don't know what those other sparkly things are. 
um, some spiders, some purple pumpkins, and I hadn't quite decided what all I was going to be using for this. This is a ribbon from the Dollar Tree that was sheer with this purple sparkly spider webs on them. It was really pretty. And these are from Hobby Lobby from last year that I had gotten. And again, not really sure yet what I'm going to be using for all of this, but I knew that uh, I was going to use some of it. So taking my mesh first with my rotary cutter and my cutting mat, now you can use a pair of scissors for this. You don't have to have a fancy rotary cutter. I had just gotten into this wreath kick a few years ago and I was making tons of wreaths. So I had gone ahead and invested in some of these tools. So I'm cutting strips of this. You can see how it's curling up on me. I'm gonna use that to my advantage. Um, I'm just cutting strips that are about five inches wide because I wanted to try to get as much out of this little bit of mesh that I had left as possible. And don't mind me using my hot glue can. It's like an old tomato can. I just keep my hot glue sticks in it so they're close at hand. <laughs> my crafting table is a little bit of a mess, you guys. It's like, I like having everything close. <laughs> you know, I like everything at hand. But anyway, so I ended up with 10 orange and 10 green strips. No, not 10, I'm sorry, five green. Five green, 10 orange. So now I'm taking my full roll of deco mesh. I believe this is a 10 inch roll. And I think, I wanna say it's like 30 feet long. I could be mistaken. But this is from either Joann's or Hobby Lobby. I got it end of last year. And I'm going around and I'm skipping over, I'm alternating first of all from top to bottom and then back to the top, back to the bottom. And then I'm also skipping over the twist ties that are built into this wreath form. Now, if you have just a regular wreath form, you can just put regular pipe cleaners on there, chenille stems, whatever you want to call them and do it that way. I do that all the time. So you don't have to have this fancy wreath with the stuff built in. I just happened to have gotten it on sale at the end of the season. So I'm gonna just keep on going around until I get to the end and then right back where I started and then cut off that mesh. Kind of fluff it up a little bit, make sure that it's how I want it. I really just eyeball this, you guys. I do not measure it. If I had to guess, I would say that the little bumps are maybe 10 to 12 inches long. Um, but now I'm gonna take two of the orange and one of the green, and I'm gonna try and tie them down. I, I tried this at first, but they were way too long. So I decided, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, do I cut them? I don't really like cutting the deco mesh any more than I have to because it t does tend to fray. So I decided to just take them off and fold them in half again. I'm sorry, I'm out of frame here, but I folded them in half again, and then in that center piece, I went ahead and attached them down. Just put them in the little pipe cleaner area and twist that twice. So I'm gonna show you here again. So I folded it in half and then I grabbed the middle once it was folded in half. And I'm just going to fasten that down. Hopefully that makes sense and you can see well enough what I'm doing. Folding it in half, grabbing the middle once it's all folded in half together and then fastening it. Just a couple of twists with the chenille stems to fasten those down. So now I'm gonna come in with the green and orange. I don't know what this is called. It reminded me of those like finger catchers, if you remember from, it was probably the 1980s if I have to be honest, but we used to have these Chinese finger traps or whatever. You could stick your finger on either end and pull and your fingers were stuck in there. Anyway, that's what this made me think of because they, anyway, <laughs> it's late you guys. Um, so I was trying to decide how I wanted to work with this, whether I wanted to cut it or whether I wanted to try and keep it going. Ultimately, I did decide I needed to cut it. So I'm making little, loops or bows maybe if you will for lack of a better term I'm showing you here what I did so I just looped it on either side and grabbed the ends in the middle and then I fastened all of that down in the center I hope 
that makes sense. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And again, just twisting a couple of times around to keep that secure. So now I'm coming in with the purple, actually it's black sheer ribbon with the purple sparklies on it. I just thought this was really pretty. And I'm gonna go through here and do the same thing that I did with the base deco mesh. So I'm gonna just alternate and bounce around from top to bottom and just go around my wreath that way. So now I'm coming in with some of my picks. I'm gonna find places for my little witch's hats. I'll come back in and add in some pumpkins. And I'm really just trying to decide where I want everything at this point. So I'm not fastening anything down really until I decide where I want everything. So once I decide where I want things, I do go ahead and start fastening them down. With these pumpkins, I just twisted up the pipe cleaners, I'm gonna call them pipe cleaners for lack of a better term, from the wreath, and I'm just really jabbing those right into the base of the foam pumpkin. So I'm not even using hot glue, I just secured it that way, and they were perfectly secure. For the witch's hats, I am twisting the little twist tie around the base of the pick and then I will come back in after that and secure it with some hot glue. Now I'm coming in with my little spider friends. I'm going to place them all around where I want them and then I'll come back in and glue them down as well. So I want to say a quick congratulations to Michelle Hines. Michelle, you are the winner for the Dollar Tree giveaway. Congratulations. Be sure to email me your address so I can get this awesome package out to you. Congratulations once again. So now I'm coming in with one of the picks that I've gotten from the Hobby Lobby and I didn't like the way that it was looking with it just full so I pulled it all apart as I often do <laughs> and then I put it back together along with some of the Dollar Tree little black flay thingies. I don't really know what those are. Um, yeah, I don't know what they are but I wanted that dimension with the black in there and they were sparkly and pretty so that made me happy. So putting it together kind of like a little uh, bouquet and once I had it the way I wanted it, I'm going to secure it down in the area where you would otherwise perhaps think about putting a bow. Then I went in and secured it with some hot glue as well and this is after I had tied it down, I'd anchored it with the twist tie things and now the pipe cleaners, whatever, and I twisted those up some more. And now I'm just gonna come in and kind of cover up that little place with the other ribbon and the mesh. So here you go. What do you think, you guys? It's a little crazy, but it's Halloween, so I was going with it. And here we go for our final reveal. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Please do give me a big 
thumbs up if you liked today's projects. Also, please subscribe if you didn't already and hit that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Congratulations again to our Dollar Tree giveaway winner. And until next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much again for watching. Take good care. Bye.